and we're back. Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about reeds. If your inmate's bogging, this can certainly be one of the causes of that bog. Um, so we're going to scope these reeds out on this slide because I have a feeling they need to be done. There was some bogging issues with it last season that I thought maybe just have been the clutch, uh, which we did just the other day. But I have a feeling that there's something else going on because these reeds like to give out you know, at around 2,000, maybe maybe 3,000. Uh, I've seen them go early as like 1,500 um, kilometers. So we're gonna scope these reeds and just make sure that uh, they're all good. So we do have a new set right here, uh, a, new, a new used set from a uh, different M8 I was working on that we put aftermarket reeds in. So here's the reed cage. We're gonna scope the ones in this M8 real quick here and we're gonna decide if they need to be done or not because I have a feeling that they do. I'm working on a better mic setup because I want to do more videos like this, uh, more repair videos, more Intel videos. I'll, I'll take the skid out of that machine this week or maybe next week because uh, a skid video has been super requested. And uh, oh, uh, you guys wanted these hoodies. Like a lot of people are saying, where, where can I get, where can I get these, these flashy looking hoodies? The merch store officially opens on January 1st. So if you want a hoodie, you can certainly come down and. Uh, Go to sixesperformance.com. I'll leave the link in the description and you can certainly buy one and help out the channel. It's a, it's a huge help. I already got the sled at Fairways apart, so I'm gonna be skipping ahead and uh, we're just, I already have the exhaust off and stuff like that. The hood just sitting on there. Okay, so we got our scope here. I'll move that in a little closer so you can uh, actually see what exactly is going on. So down here is where we will be putting the scope. Oh, one thing is that uh, you have to have your throttle in the full open position or else you will not be able to see your reeds. I'm just gonna put a zip tie around mine. Cause you gotta keep that butterfly valve open, the butterfly flap open on the uh, throttle body or else you're not gonna be able to see anything. All right, so I'm gonna do this while trying to stay out of the the way of the, uh, the light as best I can. So the, uh, the mag side, or yeah, sorry, the mag side, you can actually see almost right into. And then the, uh, the PTO side, you definitely need the scope for. So let's have a, let's have a brief look in here. I'm starting to see the pedals of the reed valve there. And what we want to do, just look at them all individually because usually it's like right on the end of the flap it's really hard to see but this one's looking good not really seeing anything wrong on that one here we go there's a good shot of the reed holy smokes and you can see that's a really good shot right there so you can see that uh, that one reed valve is uh, completely smoked, so it's got a hole right through it. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Yeah, so there's our reed with the big hole in it. Uh, not totally uncommon. Uh, so we do have to do reeds today. Okay, well, we know what needs to be done now, so let's just tear it apart and uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the reeds, we'll see what happened, and um, we'll get them replaced. I'm not going to do a tutorial on how to actually get at these reeds because it's kind of a pain. It's not a beginner job. We're going to get into those reeds. I'm going to take out the throttle bodies. I'm going to take out the clutch. I'm going to take out the air box. I have the exhaust off already and we're going to go in and inspect and see what those reeds look like uh, firsthand because there could be some pedal damage on a few of the other ones that isn't quite apparent in the borescope cam. Okay, and we are back. All right, so this is actually, you guys looked out, because this actually shows a really good example of a reed failure. Um, I'm actually gonna take off this cage real quick here. Just so we can get a better look. Okay, so this is, over here, is our, uh, our PTO side reed which was the one that had the major failure. This one was our 
uh, our bag side reed, which actually, uh, it's not that bad. Well, yeah, the pedals on this one on their, on their way out, they're one foot out the door. But I'll zoom in on this one over here so we can get a really good look at exactly what's going on. All right, so this was our problem read. And the biggest problem is this pedal right here. It's obviously not, uh, not working properly because there's a big hole in it. Um, so this is actually the reed valve itself. The rest of it just sits in that cage. Uh, this one, we can actually see the stages of failure. So this is actually a really good one to go over. Well, on this valve, you have this pedal here, which is completely blown out. And you can actually even see on this one here, it's starting, it's, it's one foot out the door, it's on the way out. This one is actually okay for now. Um, and the end one has a mark in it, so it's... Uh, yeah, the, the ends of the pedals are, they're getting pretty rough. So this, this one is, I mean, that one's obviously shot. Uh, let's look at, look at uh, this other cage here. So you can see that on all the edges of all these valves, they're one foot out the door. Uh, there's a bunch of wear here, a uh, bunch over here. It's just slow, this, one, this one's a good example because this is how they start. Uh, this is how they start to wear. You can see right there that the end of that pedal is getting a little beat up. So that's what they kind of look like when they start to go. They, here's the, even these ones. They're they're one foot out the door. They're they're on their way out. And uh, the other side, or the PTO side, uh, or sorry, yeah, the PTO side. That's the one we had a problem with. They're one foot out the door. They're starting to get chipped uh, just from actuating so much. So if you're not familiar with how a reed valve works or exactly what they do, um, so let's go over them real quick. So basically all this is is a check valve for air. So what happens is, I'll use this one, and I don't mind wrecking these because they're already, they're already pooched. So in the bottom end of your engine, that's where your charge goes in. It goes into the bottom end of the engine. Primary uh, compression takes place there. And basically, your air just goes in through here. One way, it's a check valve for air. So air goes in, is able to come in that way, is able to be pushed in. But when you have compression from the other side, those flaps don't allow air to come in, right? So that's how they, they work. So air, air can go in smoothly this way. It'll go in this way but air cannot come in the other side. So there's your primary compression. That's that's basically how it happens. So air goes in through here. Your throttle bodies would be right here. Air goes in through here into the bottom end of the engine. That's where it's, your primary compression takes place. It's compressed, goes through the transfer ports and up to the top end of the engine where it's compressed again as your secondary compression, which is much higher. That's, that's where your power is. The problem becomes is when you have a big hole in your reeds is that that primary compression uh, loses a whole bunch of its power. So now instead of that compression compressing that air and going through the transfer ports and to the top end of the engine, what's happening now is the air is now going back in through the intake, but like partially, not all of the air, but a portion of the air is going back in through the intake. And that means part of your chart, you're losing part of your charge and you're losing part of your, um, your primary compression. So you have a lot less charge uh, and a lot less compression going through the transfer ports into the secondary compression area, which is the, uh, the cylinder, which is where the spark plug is and that, that's where your charge is ignited. So why do these reeds fail? Like why, why, why is this happening? Why does this, why, why does this reed look like this? Now think about it this way, is these are basically just pieces of plastic. That's all that these valves are. They're nothing more than just plastic. So air comes in through there and these are uh, opening at the same rate as what your rotation is, uh, uh, rotation on the engine. So you go for a ride, these have literally opened thousands of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of times a day. 
So when a little piece of plastic like this is forced to actuate probably close to a million times in a day, if not more, probably more, when this engine is sitting there at idle, that's, uh, I think an engine sits at idle on these at around, I think it's around 2200 or we'll just say 2000. I don't remember off the top of my head. But that basically means is that if you have your sled warming up and sitting there for a minute running, these pedals have actuated 2000 times over the course of one minute. So they wear out. That's what causes this to happen. And they're exposed to heat. Um, and that's, that's just what happens. They just wear out. You can see that it's not actually burnt. It's just frayed and flaked and that's just how they wear. Like this, this one is particular. This one's like a really bad one. Uh, this here is usually how they start on this one. And then they kind of work their way up to uh, what this one's done here. So I have another set of reeds here, which are very gently used and I didn't have to pay for them. That's why we're not doing V-Force or, um, or boys and reeds. Uh, and you guys can argue all you want in the comments, which one's better, I don't care. Uh, but we're just going to put the stock ones in because I didn't have to pay for them. Uh, Nigel actually gave them to me because uh, we did the reeds in his machine. We have to clean a little, the gaskets on these ones are luckily in good shape. Because uh, we can't have any air leaking in past that. Like, besides, besides the reed valves them, themselves, uh, we can't have any air leaking in anywhere else. So if your machine is idling poorly, if you uh, are not getting your full power, uh, it, it just kind of feels like in the throttle response, there's kind of like an off switch, like like part of the, it depends how bad your reeds are. Like this one here was really bad, but it, it kind of just feels like there's an off switch in your throttle. Like it's just like governed. Um, so I, I know there's a lot of places to look on sleds when they start to bog. Uh, but the reeds is certainly one of them and this is a, a perfect example of a failure and an example of them needing to be replaced. So let's do that. Let's throw the new ones in. That's about uh, all I got for today's video. If some of you are having a rough idling sled or lack of power like I was having, both I was having, uh, this could very well be your issue. I definitely didn't show everything that's involved with uh, doing that repair uh, because it's a big job. It took me about a little over an hour, maybe closer to an hour and a half, but that's because I've done hundreds of them. So I know what I'm doing. Uh, I didn't show me pulling coolant lines. I didn't show a really good example of me pulling throttle bodies, uh, oil pump linkage, because if you go to reassemble something uh, and you forget your re um, to put your oil pump linkage back in, you can say goodbye to that motor. I just don't want anybody to uh, cook their motor because of something I said, or because of something I didn't say. This thing is almost at 100%. I think I'm gonna take it out tomorrow. What do you guys say? I'll, I'll see if I I'll see if I can get a video up by uh, by uh, Friday for it. 
because um, I'm going to take it out tomorrow and um, just test it out because I did play with a few things on it as well as this machine didn't get ran a whole lot last year. So it's got some new parts, a new clutch and new reeds. So I want to take it out and just uh, take it for a test drive before it goes to Rumblestone. That's all I got for this video. If you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel and leave a like down below. If you did not like this video and you did not find it helpful, leave a like down below and I'll see everyone in the next one. Tomorrow, hopefully. Bye-bye. <laughs> Fuck. That's kind of funny. Yeah. The Drax is howling. Dude! <laughs>